kusalimu katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Na tunakukaribisha kwenye ibada yetu ya siku ya leo. Tunapomwambia Bwana we usikiae maombi, ujibuye kwa moto. Tutazidi kuomba mwaka huu. Because a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. May the Lord help us to seek him more and more. Jesus said, pray that we may not fall into temptations. May the Lord grant us the grace this year in Jesus name. And everybody in the house of the Lord, tumwambie Bwana tunapoomba unasikia na kuyajibu maombi yetu. Hakuna linalo mshinda huyo Mungu. Tunapomuomba kwa imani katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Hallelujah. Hakika yupo Mungu mbinguni. There is a God in heaven who hears and answers our prayers.
We are blessed this morning to have the servant of the Lord all the way from the, from the U.S. Unajua kati mwingi, tunadhia niaga watu wale wametoka U.S. ni wale ambao ni wazungu. Hallelujah. But Pastor Charles has lived in the U.S. for, for many years, but he's a Kenyan. He's a, he's a Kenyan. Uh, ni memuambia, uh, ni ruhusu tu nisi tamke jina yake hiyo ya pili. Ya yeah, takuja kutuambia <laughs> jina ya pili. Yeah. Ni, ni jaribu tu kidogo Lukwaro eh, Lukwaro eh, luk, eh, luk, 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 Okay uh -huh. So Pastor Charles is a friend of this church uh, For many years uh, There was a time in 2017 He was here And we thank the Lord When I heard that he was coming We connected and uh, I told him It's good for you to come and uh, Be a blessing to us and share the word of the Lord with us uh, Pastor Charles comes, he serves with uh, Calvary, Calvary Christian Church in the US, USA, in Boston, nama Boston, kule, kule Boston. So it is my pleasure to bring the servant of the Lord, Pastor Charles. Karibu sana bahati, na ujisikia nyumbani, hapa ni nyumbani, hallelujah. Kitaka, kitaka kutuhubiria na hiyo kizungu ya Amerika, sawa. <laughs> okay. Amen. <laughs> I understand I have 30 minutes, so I got to be done by 10.06, and uh, I want to honor the servant of God, um, our pastor and his wife, for honoring me to be, to, and to invite me to this church today. I came with my friend here today. You want to say hi? Um, and um, my name's, as you heard, uh, Pastor Charles Rokuaro. I always have that problem with the last name in the US. I never knew I would have it back here in Kenya. Jitaguo <laughs> Rokuaro. I don't say that in the States. They call me every kind of words. They can call me reward. Some of them call me awkward. Some people call me anything. And I'm never offended, I'm all right. So, I was born in Akuru, raised here until I was 38. I moved to the States. I've been there for 14 years now. I pastored here for 10 years. I was prayed over uh, because I was serving with Redeemed then. So Bishop Kitonga prayed for me before I went to the States. But I went to America, I got saved, I joined AG. Wow. <laughs> anyway, um, well, yeah, I um, those people who know that um, what I mean is uh, I just, AG and Redeemed, we are all one. And I served in the church as an associate pastor until now. I'm married. And I'm, I have three daughters. And uh, two of them are in college. And one is going to high school. Uh, I'm not only a pastor, but I'm the president and the executive director of Good Hope Incorporation. And uh, it's good hope that has brought me to Kenya, and I have been privileged to serve in those two organizations. And I have a very strong relationship with AG Kenya. Now they don't like me because I like Kenya a lot. 
because um, this is, I, I just came this time, I may come in April and I may come back in October because there are so many things we are doing with uh, the church in Kenya. Uh, receive greetings from our bishop, Philip Kitaro. Um, Kiroto, Kiroto, right? Yeah, Kitoto and his wife. Um, I had, we, uh, myself and our team, we had a, a meeting with them last night and they told me that they love you very much and they are praying for you. Amen. Amen. This is our mother church. It will always remain mother church, no matter what. We hosted Bishop Kitoto 2019 and he was, I was his, his driver, so how blessed I am. <laughs> you know, when you also have Bishop General Spirit in your house, you feel more saved, you know. So we have that strong relationship. Good Hope is an international organization that does projects around the world. We've done work here, Tanzania, Ghana, Doug Wells, uh, Morocco, uh, we were doing another well in Malawi. This last year we did two wells in Kenya, one in Masai Mara, another one in Mombasa. We also built a clinic in Masai Mara with Bishop Mayanka. Uh, God has ushered us into a new level in a different way this year because the reason I came is because we are launching a feeding program in a, high, in, in a secondary school. So we, we just did launch a program with one of the churches that is sponsoring it in the States. And I came with a pastor who flew back last night. So we are starting a feeding program. I'm also partnering with Bishop and the AG in the sanitary program that is going to kick off across the country where we want to help our children in elementary and high school. So we want to combine the feeding program and the sanitary program and also distribute Bibles too. So there is that work that brought us here. The second thing we did, which was emergency that we are attending as Good Hope, is that one of my contacts here, who is my niece, <clears throat> was serving in a children's home and the director died suddenly and left 40 orphans, orphans again. And when we received that word, I, my heart broke and I didn't know what to do. But I was shocked because for the last year, almost a year, there was a couple in our church that were pushing me. Please, Pastor Charles, help us start an orphanage. Please help us anywhere in Africa. And every time I tell them that that's the most difficult thing you can do, please don't do it, the more they got excited about doing it. So I mentioned it to them that that has happened, and in less than three or two months, they, when they heard we were coming to do the feeding program, they asked if they can come with us. And now I came with the lady who is in charge of it, and they came to the home last Tuesday, and they have changed that place, bought everything they needed, and they are hoping to work with them. God putting things together in the right time. So we've never had any permanent project here for Good Hope, but now we are going to have two projects. So pray with us. And I have a burden to talk to as many Kenyans as I can to come back home and do some permanent work. A work that is going to promote the lives of our brothers and sisters. So that's why we are in Kenya. And please pray with us as we pray for you. Our senior pastor is coming to Kenya to bring away of the Shepherd Conference that, we've, that was first organized by our late bishop. And now it's going to not only be done in October here in Kitangela, hopefully, but he will also do it in Ethiopia. So I put that together too. So that's the reason also I, I had a meeting with uh, our bishop. So uh, allow me to pray as we get to hear the word of God asking the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Father God, we are grateful that we are in this church today. This is your house, and it is known as a house of prayer. You say that my house shall not be a house a den of, of thieves, but it shall be a house of prayer. Holy Spirit, welcome and speak to us. 
We thank you for your faithfulness. May our lives never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, um, I have been privileged to be traveling around the world a little bit. And one of the burdens the Lord has put in my heart is the burden of prayer. I have led prayer in our church for over 10 years, and our church has been blessed in different ways. Our church is supporting over 600 missionaries with a budget of over $2 million. And everybody in our church knows that that is happening, not because we're in America, not because of anything else, but because of the power of prayer. Because of the power of prayer. And therefore, this morning, allow me to speak about a challenge that we, we will receive and we will continue receiving from the life of Jesus Christ himself. Let me begin by reading the book of Matthew 26, verse 36 to verse 41. The Bible says, then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over and pray. And take with, taking with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, somebody say a little farther. He fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Somebody say one hour. <laughs> watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So, friends, this was the last hours of Jesus, and he was in Gethsemane, and he was getting ready to die. If you knew you were going to die in the next 24 hours, what are you going to do? If somebody told you that you're going to live for a week, what are you going to do? Jesus was in Gethsemane, and the meaning of Gethsemane in Hebrew is it's spelled like Gat Shamin, which means oil press. Nimahali Pama Pa, where you press the olives until they produce oil. And as we read in Matthew, Jesus' last day was in Gethsemane, and he was, the Bible tells us, he was sorrowful even unto death. We are told that he was troubled in his spirit. I don't know how many people are troubled by what is happening in the world today. I don't know how many people are troubled by the news we receive in the television and in all media uh, 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 sources and how the, the violence and the, the immorality and all forms of wickedness is increasing day by day. And the reason why Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane was so that he may die and give hope to all of us. And therefore this morning, we want to learn from him himself, from the Lord Jesus, of the importance of prayer. The title of my sermon, I'm calling it A Little Father, A Little Father, A Little Father, or The Gethsemane Challenge, A Little Father, or The Gethsemane Challenge. And I begin with my first point, which is a call to an hour of prayer, a call to an hour of prayer. Verse 39 of the same scripture, and I'll read it again, says, and going a little further, he fell on his faith, face and prayed. He fell on his face and he did what? When was the last time you fell on your face and prayed? Jesus fell on his face and he prayed saying, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. 
And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Fresh, I mean friends, every one of us want to pray, but we find ourselves sleeping. We find ourselves having excuses. We find ourselves being busy. We find ourselves distracted. We find ourselves prioritizing other things. We know that Jesus was going to the cross to die for us, so he gathered the disciples in Gethsemane, and he was praying and praying and praying, and one of the things was telling God, this is too painful for me. This is so difficult for me. Can you, Lord, do something else? You know, I was privileged a few years ago, probably 2015, to go to Israel, and in, uh, we, were, we were privileged to be in Gethsemane, and it's not a big, big place. It is a little small place, but it's a very sacred place, and we had a time of prayer there. But I could see Jesus falling on his face and crying and praying trouble in his heart. Can I tell you today, you and me are saved today because of his travailing prayer. We, the church, is stronger because Jesus paid the full price. And one of the price he paid is the price of prayer. If a church is going to go to the next level, it must follow Jesus in the place of prayer. The Bible tells us that he called John, James, and Peter, and he went a little farther with them. We have to accept to allow Jesus to pick us up and go a little further with him so that we can help in his burden of reaching the world. Tell your neighbor, can you follow Jesus a little farther? He went and he told the man, let's pray now because this is a determinant hour. And then he himself went a little farther and he prayed. And when he was praying, he was not just praying a kind of a normal prayer. He was travailing in his spirit. He was, he was, he was in anguish. And when he came back, what did he find his disciples doing? When Jesus comes to you, what does he find you doing? I hope you're not sleeping. Tell your neighbor, I hope you're not sleeping. Mark reminds us that when Christ gave this challenge, because he came and he told the disciples, can't you not watch with me even for one hour? The Bible tells us in Matthew, Mark 13, 37, that what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Friends, the church is being called to a place of prayer. The church is being called to follow Jesus a little farther. Farther than where your church is. Farther than where you're used to. Farther than where other churches are. Farther. Amen. Amen. Muslims pray five times a day. Daniel prayed three times a day. But Jesus is calling us to go to a little farther. A little farther. Let us get the example from the, from the early church. What happens when we pray or when we go a little bit farther. When we spend time in prayer, my point number two is we will experience a miracle in the hour of prayer. You can never go farther in prayer and remain the same. You cannot go a little further in prayer and your family remain the same. You can never go a little further as a church and our church remain the same. Can you see all these chairs that don't have anybody? These chairs are telling you, go a little farther. Can you just touch a chair that is empty nearby you? Say, I ask, I pray that someone will come and fill this prayer by my faithfulness in prayer. I pray that somebody will fill this house in the next few days because of my prayer. So every time you see that empty prayer, remember this message that is until you go a little farther, that is when you will be able to find somebody filling. We want more people upstairs. We want people, more people downstairs. And it's by the power of prayer. The Bible says in Mark 16 verse 17, 
that and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This promise was fulfilled when the disciples accepted the challenge of creating an hour of prayer. Somebody say an hour of prayer. It was an hour of prayer that Peter and John decided to commit in their lives just like Jesus had challenged them. And because they had decided to go a little further, something was happening in their lives. Read with me Acts chapter 3 verse 1. And uh, because of time, I won't read the whole, uh, the whole scripture. But the Bible says from verse 1 that one afternoon, Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. Somebody say the hour of prayer. No, say like you mean it. You see, Peter and John and James had let Jesus down in Gethsemane. And now Jesus has gone up to heaven and he has sent the help of the Holy Spirit and they had set an hour of prayer. Verse 2, the, the Bible says, And a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from entering the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked directly at, at him, as did John. Look at us, said Peter. So the man gave his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Take him up by the right hand, Peter helped him up. And at once, the man's feet and ankles were made strong. He sprang to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and limping and praising God. Can somebody shout amen? amen. These men were faithful to the hour of prayer. And as they were going to the church in the hour of prayer, hallelujah, I like the hour of prayer. Amen. Quick testimony. In 208, I had a church in Kerich of about 200 people, and I had a school of about 200 kids. And clashes came upon us in 208, and we lost everything, everything, everything. Lost the job, lost everything. But as I'm talking today, in the last two years, no, in the last three years since 2019, through Good Hope and through our church ministry, I've been able to do missions around the world with over $200,000. From a place of losing everything to a place of blessing the world, but inside between there is the power of prayer. Amen. Friends, prayer can change the world. And we know Peter and John had learned from Jesus and they had set apart the hour of prayer. Our church last year started a movement where we ask all the members of our church, uh, our pastor, to take one hour of prayer a week. And we agreed we want to cover the 24 hours of prayer so that every hour somebody is praying. Every hour, every hour. And we began a ministry called Prayer 247. And now our church is almost filling all the slots. We have only 40 hours to fill this, the, 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 the prayer circle. And our hope and our prayer is that if we cover 24 hours, we will have one circle and then we'll have another second circle and we'll have another circle. And we are believing God. I say we are believing God for revival. Amen. I went in Nepal and I taught about the prayer 247. And the church of Nepal took the vision. And miracles began to happen. The leader of my prayer 247 in Nepal, I found out they were interpreting for me and driving me around and... I asked them, where is your baby? They said, we've been married six years, but no baby. 
I said, can we put our faith in God? Listen, we don't pray because pastor said it. We don't pray because we, we had it somewhere. We pray because we know God answers prayer. Amen. We say God answers prayer. Amen. They said, please, please, if you can uh, pray with us in the hotel. We were going in the same hotel. We can trust God for a baby. So we went to the hotel and made a very simple prayer. And after I came back to the States, six weeks later, I received a text from my friends in Nepal. We are having a baby soon. My wife is pregnant. Amen. God is still doing miracles. Amen. But we have to honor the hour of prayer. Our, an hour of prayer. In conclusion, my last point is a vision in the hour of prayer. Friends, you not only receive a miracle, you receive a vision. Yes. What I'm doing around the world, God showed me in 1992. When I was in college, and I was praying through the book called Operation World, and I prayed for visa for all countries. I was a student, and I was asking God, I want to go in different places, and God was so faithful. And now, I'm having one problem, Pastor, with the Kenyan visa. It is really disturbing me, because it's now e-visa. And I can't come to Kenya without a visa because I've not applied for dual citizenship. You are praying for one miracle, I'm praying for another miracle. But let me tell you something, there are miracles in the hour of prayer. Amen. Can I say that we are not just following prayer because of just miracles, but we have a vision to bring people to the kingdom. We, have a, we need a vision. The Bible says, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 1 to verse 16, at Sicilia there was a man named Cornelius a Centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and the gift to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Job, to Joppa. Bring a man named Simon who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants, a device soldier who was one of the attendants. He told them everything that, God, uh, that, that had happened and sent them to, to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then the voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, the, not, Lord, Peter replied, I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, do not call anything impure that God had, has made clean. Now in this place we find that Peter was in prayer in the roof of his house in Joppa when he received a vision to share the gospel to the house of Cornelius. And as Peter was praying, Cornelius was praying. Two people were praying at the same time. And Peter received a vision of an angel. I mean, sorry, Cornelius received a vision of an angel saying, send your servant to Joppa. And then Peter was praying and he, he saw a tr in a trance a vision of a sheet of animals and God told him, kill the many. And to cut the whole soul is short, God was speaking about the Gentiles who had not had the gospel by that time. Friend, when we honor the hour of prayer, we are going to experience the visitation from on high. We will receive vision from the Holy Spirit. We will receive dreams from the Holy Spirit. And through those dreams, God is going to connect his purposes. I'm grateful. I'm becoming a friend, more friend of your pastor. I realize our hearts are connecting. And I am hoping and praying that God will help us 
to come together and be stronger and not just in anything else but in prayer. And as we join in prayer, we are going to see God do great things in this place and beyond. And because of my time, I will not talk much, but we have instituted this ministry, which is now becoming a movement where we are asking every church everywhere to build circles of prayer and to surround the pastor in prayer and the pastor's family and the church leadership. Remember the story of Jericho. God told Joshua, go around, make a circle around Jericho. And the more you go around and around for seven days, and the moment when you get to the seventh day, please, all of you, shout, and I will come down for you. And that is what exactly happened. Nairobi Christian Church, are we ready to go around Jericho until the walls come down? There are so many walls, but my sister, my brother, grab an hour. Our people need, need hope, and the only hope is in Christ. I won't go too farther, but I have to tell you this vision has been received in different churches in Kenya. I think we have about 30 churches in this country, about 10 churches in Uganda, and I will be going to Uganda next Friday. This vision has been received in Ghana. This vision has been received in Tanzania. This is, is already spreading in the United States because people want to encounter God. People are tired of religion. People are tired of going to church and not experiencing God. We want to experience the power of the Almighty God. And it is no shortcut, but you have to go a little farther. You got to follow Jesus and not just religiously do it. You are going to fall like he fell. And you are going to pray like he prayed. And you are going to say, not my will, but your will. We have a full online website. We have forms and everything where you can sign up and you don't have to come and pray here in the church. You can pray at home. You can pray in your car. You go to work. You can pray from wherever because God is everywhere listening to us all the time. And we can trust God to do it. Let's stand up if we can.